let's look at event-driven integration using SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Code Talk. I'm really pleased to have Shilpa and Sunny with me on the call today. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to ask Sunny, we, Shilpa, and no disrespect to you, but we, we are good friends on Code Talk, you and I. But Sunny, you're new. Could you take a few moments just to introduce yourself to the Code Talk audience? Sure, Ian. Hello, everyone. My name is Sunny. And I'm part of SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite Product Management Team. Yeah. Excellent. Nice, short and sweet. We like that. So let's hit the ground running. Let's set a base level for all of our viewers of CodeTalk. Uh, I don't know which one of you wants to take the question, but what is event-driven integration? Okay, so I'll, I'll take this question. So first we understand in very simple words, what is an event, right? So event means a thing that happens or takes place. And there's a lot of things which are happening. So especially we are talking about the things which are especially one of importance, right? And nowadays business applications expose a lot of events, right? For example, if you say uh, a, a sales order gets created or changed in SAP, SAP S4 HANA system, right? The other example could be when a new employee gets hired in SAP success factor, that is also an event, right? Uh, and in event-driven integration, these events are then associated to a enterprise messaging topic, okay, to achieve publish subscribe model. In short, we call it as pub sub model. And 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 uh, all the applications, interesting applications, for example, uh, extension application, uh, a serverless function, an integration interface, are then subscribed to this topic via queues so that they can achieve this pub sub and event-driven integration. Excellent. Nice, uh, nice, succinct uh, description. So how does it differ from other integration patterns that are out there? Okay, so this event driven integration is establishing currently itself as a third major pattern. So what are the other two? So we are talking about the pull pattern and the push pattern. These are quite famous. Uh, a pull pattern is more of consumer driven. Yeah, for example, if you're writing an integration interface, it's mostly driven by the consumer or integration interface where based on a timer or based on an API, it simply pull the data. And it's not very real time, right? It, it, it can be called in batches as well. The other pattern is the push pattern, okay? Uh, this is asynchronous in nature, while the pull pattern is also synchronous in nature. And this is also, this is not consumer driven, this is provider driven because it's, it's the provider who choose, okay, now I'll send it, okay? Now, this event driven integration pattern is a combination of both. It combines, the asynchronous messaging with the subscription model where your consumers control the subscription. And the main advantage of this event-driven integration is the agility. It provides a lot of agility, resilience at any point in time, any consumer can come or go without affecting the publisher. So it's really benefit for the real uh, world uh, cloud applications. So we go to you, Shilpa. What's the significance of event-driven integration in enterprise infrastructure, oh, sorry, not infrastructure, architecture. Yeah, yeah, and thanks for this question. And uh, to all our audience, as Sunny has already explained, uh, what is an event and the challenges with traditional architecture. So let's see how event-driven architecture helps to overcome these. And let's now deep dive into the events in enterprise architecture and how integration suite can help as a publishing of these events, pub, which is publisher and consumer of these events, right? So uh, let's understand this as three layers. The bottom one uh, is the publishing of the event, the event publishers. The second one on top of that is actually the event streaming, uh, the distribution and the uh, messaging of the events. And the third layer uh, would be the consumption experience, the consumptions of the event. In between the second and third layer, I will also talk about uh, the event catalog, what SAP has done from its end to provide you the complete catalog of events and which are there on Business Hub. So let's take uh, these layer one by one. Let me deep dive into these three layers. So the first one, which uh, at the bottom, 
right? Which I call it as publishers, event publishing, or the event enablement or injection of the event, right? So these can be divided into two categories. The first one uh, is the direct event enablement. And the second one is through the middleware. So uh, when you talk about applications, for example, S4HANA, C4HANA, Ariba, or any database, these are all the direct event enablement. Uh, these provide the direct enable uh, events, uh, you know. And then uh, the middleware experience, for example, integration suite, which I just spoke that it can also be uh, even publisher, right? So in this case, cloud platform integration suite is the event publisher. So let's take these two uh, categories and I'll just provide you one more example. So uh, when we talk about creating a sales order in S4 HANA, this can trigger an event. So this is your application triggering an event. Or when we talk about business partners getting created in your HANA database or any other database, this can again trigger an event. So applications and database, which is the direct event enablers, right? And then when we move to the middleware based, uh, based event enablement, so this can be, uh, there can be an example. For example, uh, we, when we talk about, uh, you know, transformation, for uh, let's say you have sales order created, it gives the order ID, but we need some more details from lookups and all. So we need to transform this so that we get the address of that uh, customer based on the sales order ID. So this can be done, for example, in cloud platform integration. So integration suite here can act as the middleware uh, of publishing the events. Now moving on to the second layer, which is actually the event messaging layer. And why do we need that? So all these events you know, can be enabled through uh, uh, AMQP, MQTT, JMS protocols. And just to have one more example, why we need middleware you know, uh, the reason is uh, you, we have these, uh, our legacy systems, which do not support the protocols because of that also we need uh, middleware. So uh, moving on, uh, why we need a messaging layer on top of uh, even uh, publishing, right? So uh, it, it supports the high volume of data, high speed communication between the application and systems. Uh, it decouples your communication system by providing asynchronous message protocols, patterns, uh, provide uh, reliable data transmission, and also it helps in heavy load. Yeah, this, this is our second layer. So let me, you know, uh, come to the third event catalog in between the third and second layer later. Uh, the third layer is the consumption experience. Again, integration suite or middleware can be thought of uh, uh, one of the uh, consumer of these events, or maybe these events can be consumed by data lakes or the extension uh, suite and so on, right? And then coming to the catalog here. So if you go to api.sap.com or business hub, you could see a lot of events which SAP has taken one step ahead and expose these catalogs so that you directly consume it in your different portals. For example, um, you can consume it in API management, uh, API management portal, right? So these are a couple of, uh, you know, examples of the uh, event catalog and also the APIs, uh, how we have APIs in API Business Hub. Similarly, we have events. So you can go and explore api.scp.com right now. So this is what in uh, short, Ian. Cool, okay. So how about, uh, how does integration suite support event-driven integration? I don't know which one of you two wants to take that, uh, that question. I'll take this one, Shilpa. So uh, in integration suite, we have a lot of services, right? So I quickly pick one one service and quickly try to explain what all features it can provide. So let's start with enterprise messaging. So it's really enable event-driven extension and integration, right? It can also decouple your application logic and develop microservices. Last but not the least in enterprise messaging, it also provides you out of the box event enablement for SAP, HANA, uh, SAP S4 HANA application and other applications in future. So, so this is your actual event driven enablement layer in SAP, right? And then we go to the SAP uh, cloud integration layer or this cloud integration service. It provides the middleware, middleware based event enablement. So if you have a legacy application where you cannot publish an event 
you can do that via any proprietary protocol and then cpi will publish an event on that on the behalf of that legacy application right it also publish and consume events as part of an event driven integration pattern which we understood earlier it is also provide lot of uh, event based protocols such as we have out of the box amqp protocol support we have kafka protocol support we have jms https based protocol support as well and it also support all event providers such as enterprise messaging kafka ems azure data lake uh, aws sqs aws simple notification service so yeah it is quite capable enough in that sense as well then we have api management layer it can also publish and consume events as part of event driven uh, integration pattern you can also manage web hooks and uh, serverless functions using using this api management you can put lot of uh, policies around those web hooks as well and then we have open connectors so you can really enable the events uh from the third party applications using web hooks or uh, uh, or polling capability as well so it supports both you can enable via polling or web hooks also you can trigger the formulas which is again a capability of open connectors uh, at any time when an event is received so yeah whenever you are talking about the event enablement on the third party application open connector is the solution for you uh then the sap api business hub this already uh, shilpa has touched so we also have the like we have api catalog we also have a event catalog uh, sap swahana already exposed lot of event uh, events uh, in, in in api business hub as well and in future more and more application will expose events there as well uh and the last not the least in this entire integration suite services we have serverless runtime so you can also leverage serverless runtime functions to respond to events right and you can also use functions to build new application and extensions so together all these services really enable you to work on event driven integration wow a lot of information in this code talk but where can developers find out more details yeah yeah and so i'll take this question and uh, we uh, as you know uh, sap invest a lot of time and effort to make the collateral available for our developer ecosystem right so to start with we have uh, discovery center missions we to support that we have tutorials on developer.sap.com where our colleagues can get started with and we have tons of blogs on sap community and in addition as you all know we have packet coming up in december time frame and we are really excited to see you there uh, a very good session uh, dv116 i think sunny it's 116 correct uh, it's by sunny and uh, it's 116 or 216 it's, it's 216 dev 216 it's, okay it's 216 so we have a uh, ticket session uh, dev 216 Uh, coming up and hope to see you all joining in the session there shameless plug that's what we like uh shilpa sunny thank you very much for joining me on code talk thank you yan for your time as well thank you yan